Hello friends, it's me, Shin, and today I'm coming to you from the Rio Las Vegas where we're checking out the newly opened Canteen Food Hall. Super excited to have you along with me, let's check it out. Alright everyone, and here we are seated at the Rio's new Canteen Food Hall. Six different eateries are here available for your dining options. I would say a pretty solid mix of restaurants here. You've got a pretty eclectic array of dining options available. And I'm certainly looking forward to showcasing all of them today. And it's pretty cold outside, so I think I want to start with some hot soup. Shogun Ramen comes up first. Now Shogun Ramen is the resident ramen shop here at the Canteen Food Hall, and they're offering up ramen dishes ranging from $12 to $14. They also have pork and chicken buns available for $10. I'm certainly looking forward to trying these out. Now I got the Shogun Ramen as well as some pork buns here today. And I'm certainly excited to try out my first bite here at the Rio's brand new Canteen Food Hall. First up, I'm trying the pork bun. Pretty good looking pork bun here. Although the bao bun is kind of cold, I wish they would have actually provided it steamed or hot. Let's see how it tastes though. You know, actually, I'd say that's just okay. I definitely wish that the bao bun was steamed here because it's a little harder than I would like it to be. Not that usual soft, pillowy texture that I'd like from a bao. The pork here is nice. It's fatty, it's succulent, and it's been cooked well. I'm pretty indifferent when it comes to the sauce here. It doesn't provide me much more than just a standard soy sauce taste. I wouldn't mind a soy sauce base, but I would certainly want that to be elevated or transformed in some way. It seems a little plain. Though I will say there is a little bit of nuttiness coming from some sesame oil. The bite definitely ends on the saltier side as well. I would certainly appreciate a little more balance to that. There's a little bit of lettuce here providing some freshness and crisp. And the QP mayo applied actually provides a nice richness as well. I think a slightly bolder sauce and maybe something like some scallions to provide some bite. And this would be a lot better. Next up, let's try the ramen. I got the namesake Shogun Ramen here, and I believe it's a tonkatsu broth, although there was something that looked very akin to spicy miso on the top, which typically I am a fan of. Hopefully the ramen here, Shogun Ramen, is good. I'm going to start off with some broth. You can definitely see a ton of fat in that broth. Let's see how it tastes. Hmm. You know, it's not bad. I don't know if I would say that's my favorite broth, though. I feel like I taste all of the influences of normal ramen here. I definitely get the porkiness coming from the tonkatsu base. That's certainly rich and I like that. The spicy miso paste here does exactly what you would expect it to. Provides a little bit of that nutty spiciness to the rest of the broth. And then there's also a very salty umami coming from what I want to say is like some soy sauce or a shoya sauce. I feel like this is kind of a combination of the three most popular broths being tonkatsu, tonkatsu shoyu, and that spicy miso. Kind of like if you were to pour all of the sodas from a fountain into one cup. You know, I wouldn't say it's bad, but I feel like I would appreciate those distinct styles a little bit more. We'll try the ramen noodles up next. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Oh yeah, that's fine. There's a nice firm chew to those noodles not overcooked, leaving a really pleasant texture. The light starchiness of these noodles is helping balance out a lot of those rich flavors from the broth. Honestly, I don't have any serious complaints. These are good noodles. And the last element to try is gonna be the shashu pork. Nice fatty looking pork here. Let's see how it tastes. You know, I'd say that's just okay. It's unlike other pork chashu I've had. It feels very plain. I want to say the flavors are there, but they're certainly muted. You don't get a ton of that ginger and garlic that you want in a pork chashu. It feels mostly just like soy sauce and pork. Not the best chashu pork I've had, unfortunately. All right, everyone, now that's Shogun Ramen. I'd say pretty interesting. Though I wasn't the biggest fan of the chashu pork, the cook on the noodles were great, and that broth, it actually started to grow on me after a little more of the tasting. I think I would still go back though and try one of their more pure offerings, maybe just a straight up tonkatsu ramen. Now ramen was a nice start, it was really cold outside, so I'm feeling really warm now. I think I'm kind of in the mood for a burger next. Attaboy Burger is coming up. All right, everyone, next up we have Attaboy Burger. A very simple menu at Attaboy Burger. A single or a double cheeseburger or a Texas toast double stacker. They also have onion rings, curly fries, and so we got the single as well as the Texas toast and the 50-50. This is all looking really good, let's give it a try. 
First up, the single cheeseburger. Looks like a pretty straightforward and simple burger here. Just the patty, cheese, sauce, and some pickles. Let's see how it tastes. You know, that's pretty good. The bun is very soft, but untoasted. I'm not a huge fan of that. But the cheese is really melty, and they've included a layer of caramelized onions underneath that cheese on top of the burger. It leads to a really nice nutty sweetness in the middle of the bite. I actually do really like that. The pickles offer a nice little bit of tang there, and there's certainly a little bit of a richness coming from the burger sauce. The burger sauce is just a slightly peppery mayo, with maybe a little bit of paprika as well. A simple and straightforward burger sauce for a pretty simple and straightforward burger. I don't actually have any serious complaints here. And next up, I'm trying the Texas Toast. This is a double cheeseburger served between two slices of Texas Toast, although maybe a little bit thinner than Texas Toast I'm typically used to. Let's see how it tastes. Hmm. You know, that's okay. I actually like the introduction of the double patty here. I think if given another choice, I would go for the double burger instead of the single initially. There's a nice amount of meatiness. They've actually done a really great job seasoning the burgers, as well as developing a decent crust. The same burger sauce is here, providing some richness, and the pickles and onions are present as well. My biggest issue with this Texas toast is unfortunately the Texas toast is quite soggy and that's not because I've left it out. It's incredibly soft, I can't even feel a real toast to it. You don't have that crispy edge that you're expecting when you see toast like this. It also kind of creates for a soggy bite that's quite greasy because of how much butter is applied. The cheese that they used here as opposed to the burger is a Swiss cheese providing a much less rich but a nice mild cheesy flavor. If this Texas toast was thicker and had a little more of a toasty element to it, then this could be a really good burger. Now they have both curly fries as well as fried onions for your options as sides, but conveniently they offer both in the 50-50. Let's try the curly fry first. Oh yeah, that's really good. Nice and crispy on the outside, while very soft on the inside. Great cook on those fries, no complaints there. I actually really like the seasoning here. Oftentimes I find curly fries like this to be over seasoned and incredibly salty, but these feel like just the right amount. Not too salty, really letting you appreciate the flavors of both the potatoes as well as the seasonings here. But I like it, I'm a fan of the curly fries. And the last thing to try from Attaboy Burger is gonna be these fried onions. These certainly have a nice golden color, let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that's really good. Wherever they've got on the fryer is certainly doing a great job. Nice and crispy here without overcooking the onions in the center. You do get a nice nutty sweetness from the onions here. And a well-applied simple seasoning blend in that batter. I really like these. Honestly, both sides have been really good. I get the 50-50 every time. All right, my friends, now that is the first two of six restaurants here at the Canteen Food Hall. I'm joined by my brother-in-law today, so we're gonna continue working on this food, and then we might take a little bit of a break, maybe go play some slots, and then we'll be back for another two. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. I got absolutely wrecked at the slot, so I'm hungry again for some more food, and we got our same table, which is really great. Started off the video with some Japanese food, so I thought I'd continue the theme. We're gonna check out Nama Nama Sushi next. Nama Nama Sushi is the resident sushi shop here at the Canteen Food Hall, and they have a separate takeout menu from sit down, and I'm obviously getting takeout food here because I have a booth with my brother-in-law. I decided to go with some salmon and tuna nigiri, as well as a lump blue crab tuna roll. This is all looking really good. Let's give it a try. Now to say right off the bat, this sushi is pretty expensive. Seven dollars for two nigiri rolls is quite up there. Let's go ahead and see how it tastes. Dip it into some soy sauce and wasabi here, and we give it a try. You know what, that's pretty good. Great job with the sushi rice here. It's got a nice chew to it, not too gummy, and it's been infused with just the bright amount of vinegar. I'm actually surprised. I thought the sushi fish was not gonna taste as good as it did, but this is a very good salmon. It's been properly aged. It has a silky smooth texture, a beautiful mild flavor, and you certainly get the nice salty umami from that soy sauce, as well as the heat from that wasabi. You know, honestly, it's pretty good. Color me impressed. That's solid salmon sushi right there. Next up is gonna be the tuna. We'll dip that into the soy sauce as well, and we give this a taste. You know what, not bad. 
Now, we'll say that was a little interesting. The sushi rice on the tuna compared to that last salmon piece that I had was a little flimsier. That's kind of blowing my mind because I imagine this is all coming from the same pot. But intriguing nonetheless, the outside of just a little bit of that gummy texture, it's pretty good still. The salmon is 100% better than the tuna here. While it's not bad, it wasn't as surprising to me as that salmon was. It does have a relatively nice texture, though nowhere near as smooth as that salmon. Honestly, it's not bad, but I would definitely be going in on that salmon instead. Alright everyone, and the last bite to try from Nama Nama Sushi today is gonna be the lump blue crab roll. We'll get it dipped into some soy sauce here. And we'll see how this is. You know, that's actually really good. The sushi rice continues to do its thing here. No real complaints when it comes to that aspect. The introduction of nori compared to the previous nigiri rolls is really welcome here. Providing a nice briny saltiness, which is the initial flavors you get up front. That crab salad is incredibly sweet. The natural sweetness of the crab meat is really on display here. It's quite delicious. Just a little bit of mayonnaise to provide a rich creaminess, while the soy sauce and wasabi are providing their trademark umami saltiness and spice. It does taste good, I like these lump blue crab rolls. All right everyone, now that's Nama Nama Sushi here. My brother-in-law and I are gonna continue working on this and then we'll go in on our next spot. I think I'm kind of in the mood for a Philly cheesesteak. Tony Luke's is up next. All right, my friends, next up, we're going to Tony Luke's, an iconic Philly cheesesteak sandwich shop from Philadelphia. They've been in business since the 1990s, and they are a huge name in the city of brotherly love. And while they do serve steak, chicken, and pork sandwiches, unfortunately here on the grand opening day, they only have steaks available. So the only real variation I can provide is either the sliced provolone or the cheese whiz. So I got both. Now, I've personally never been to Philadelphia before, so I'm not coming to you from a place of any kind of authority. I just want to know what tastes better to me. All right, first up, I'm trying the Cheese Whiz. Really nice feeling French loaf here. I've really been looking forward to this. I hope Tony Luke's cheesesteak here is the spot to hit. I would love to have a go-to cheesesteak place. Here we go. Okay, yeah, that's really tasty. Starting off with the bread, I absolutely love this French loaf. It has a nice crusty exterior with a super soft center with a bit of that trademark earthy flavor that you get from a French loaf. A little bit yeasty, it's really good. I actually really do like the ribeye steak and I watched them cook it low and slow, really allowing a lot of those flavors to marinate and generate. I love that there's a really nice even distribution of the caramelized onions here, meaning you get a lot of that nutty sweetness throughout the entire bite. The cheese whiz is certainly interesting. While usually I'm put off a bit by that artificial flavor, there is actually a very savory saltiness here that's adding to the sandwich. It is very enjoyable. I am liking the flavors. And I can't go out to say that this is prime ribeye. It's not like it has that level of marbling and that quality of beef. But overall, it is tender and it's seasoned well and comes together as a very good sandwich. I'm a fan of this one. Next up, we're trying the cheesesteak with that provolone. Let's see how this tastes. Oh yeah, this is the way. All the elements from the previous sandwich are working very well here. I actually really love this French loaf. I feel like I can just eat this with butter by itself. With that crusty exterior and the soft center, I feel like I could eat this bread all day. The low and slow method for that ribeye is certainly working here. It creates for such a tender bite. A really nice distribution of onions again here. I got a nice amount in that bite. But I absolutely love the provolone cheese over the cheese whiz here. First off, it just tastes much more real, if I can use that word. Real cheese compared to cheese whiz is just night and day. There's such a beautiful salty richness coming from this cheese, providing a beautiful mellow tone at the end of the bite. It's not even a question for me, the provolone is 100% the way to go. All right, my friends, now that is Tony Luke's. I don't have a frame of reference. Again, like I mentioned, I've never been to Philadelphia, but I certainly enjoyed those cheesesteaks with provolone outranking that cheese whiz for me. I would love to know in the comments if you prefer cheese whiz or provolone in your cheesesteaks. But in the meantime, I can certainly give my stamp of approval. I like these sandwiches quite a bit. All right, my friends, now that's four of six down. Two more to go. I think my brother-in-law and I are gonna just kind of kick it at the table for a little bit and chill, maybe watch some videos and let our stomach settle a little bit before we go into the last two. I got absolutely wrecked at the slot machines. I'm not going back out there. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back.
Welcome back, my friends. Now my brother-in-law and I actually decided to go and play some slots after all. Got wrecked again. So let it be a lesson to you, the house definitely has the edge. However, where I have the edge is when it comes to eating, and next up we're gonna be checking out the South Lamborito Company. They're the resident Mexican food shop here at the Canteen Food Hall, and it looks like most of the prices range from about 11 to $13. You can make it a burrito, a bowl, or a salad. However, I found a lot of beef when it came to Tony Luke, so I think I want to try some other proteins today. And so let me give you a view of what I got. I got the Chile Colorado burrito, which is pork, as well as a bacon breakfast burrito. And I got the chicken California burrito, but in a bowl form. Also wanted to try some of their Southland chips and queso. And this is all looking really good, let's give it a try. First up, we're trying the chips and queso. Nice big bag of chips, as well as a sizable amount of queso here. Let's go and get a dip in. We give it a taste. Mm. Oh yeah, that's good. Love the tortilla chips here. Super crispy, nicely seasoned, and a good corn flavor. They're not super greasy, which I also appreciate. A great start to the bite. The queso here is very good. It's creamy, thick, and incredibly rich. Such a fulfilling texture. There's a fair amount of heat in this queso, though I wouldn't classify it as spicy. It's definitely accessible. It really starts off savory and ends with a little bit of heat on the back end. It is very tasty. I like their chips and queso a lot. Next up, the Chile Colorado Burrito. And I'm certainly always in the mood for a good pork burrito. Let's see how it is at the Southland Burrito Company. Hmm. You know what? Not bad. I do like the tortilla here. It's soft, has a bit of a mild flavor, and it has a nice elasticity about it. It's not tearing under the weight of this burrito. I will say there's a ton of pork in here. They certainly didn't skimp when it comes to the proteins. However, something about the spice blend seems a little off for me for a Chile Colorado. I wanna say it's a little heavy handed when it comes to either maybe the cumin or the oregano here, because it's very punchy up front and doesn't relent for the entire bite. There's actually a nice level of acidity here, and a good freshness coming from some cilantro. The Mexican cheese blend provides a nice rich salty hit, though it is kind of muted by that overpowering oregano cumin combo. I'm not sure if that's the recipe that they were going for, but it's a little off balance for me. Next up, we're trying the California chicken burrito. However, I got it in bowl form here, just to get a little bit of variety. I believe what makes this a California burrito is the fact that fries are included, and I've got an even distribution of everything in the bowl on my fork here. Let's see how it tastes. Oh yeah, that's very tasty. Firstly, these crinkle cut french fries have the perfect texture. Super crispy on the outside with a soft center. There's something very akin to a red enchilada sauce here, providing a savory tomato flavor, but there's also a nice amount of heat. You can definitely classify that as spicy. There's also some heat coming here from the jalapeno crema. While it's very rich and cool, it does also have a very nice heat to it. The guacamole is very creamy and provides a salty richness as well. And the chicken in the dish is actually quite delicious. It's very well cooked, moist chicken and tender, and it's been seasoned beautifully. There's actually a very delicious lime flavor on that chicken. That's where a ton of the citrus and the bite is coming from. You also do round out a little bit with some earthiness in the pinto beans here. And it all comes together very well. I'm a fan of this chicken dish. All right, everyone, and the last bite to try from the Southland Burrito Company is gonna be this bacon breakfast burrito. This breakfast burrito is absolutely massive. I can't believe it's the biggest burrito that I got today. And hopefully everything inside tastes really good. Let's give it a try. You know what, not bad. I don't really have any complaints when it comes to the tortillas here at the South End Burrito Company. They have a nice elasticity, holding the burrito together, and imparting a very mild tortilla flavor. It's solid. There's an element in here that's incredibly salty. I'm not sure if it's the bacon or the tater tots, but something was definitely over seasoned. It really made the initial part of the bite a little unpleasant. But then you get into a little bit of that jalapeno crema that came earlier in the California burrito, and that creamy richness is able to subdue a bit of that saltiness. It's really the earthiness of the beans here that eventually helps you with that salty flavor, because it is quite overpowering up front. The eggs are certainly present, though I don't say I can taste them too much in the bite. In general, I'd say it's pretty decent, but whatever element had that much salt on it, I hope they do cut that back a little bit in the future. All right, everyone, now that's everything that we're gonna be trying from the Southland Burrito Company. My brother-in-law and I are getting incredibly stuffed. We're gonna take a lot of this to go at this point. Just one more restaurant to try. If I had more time, I'd probably just come back tomorrow, but that's when the video has to come out. So, one more to go. I'll catch you in a little bit when that food arrives. All 
All right, everyone, and this is it. The last eatery we're checking out here at the Canteen Food Hall. This is Tender Crush. Tender Crush is a New York-based chicken shop serving up sandwiches as well as strips. I decided to go for their hot chicken sandwich today as well as their Thai spicy chicken strips. And I also got an order of their seasoned waffle french fries. I am so incredibly stuffed. Three more dishes to go. Let's give it a try. First up, we're trying the hot crushed chicken sandwich. This is their spicy chicken sandwich. It looks very involved. There's a ton of stuff going on here. Also a pretty big sandwich here. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Now right off the bat, I'll definitely tell you, there's a lot of spice here. There's definitely a fair amount of heat. There's a ton of cayenne in this sauce, really lighting up my taste buds. The bun is very soft and ever so slightly toasted on the center, but it's not holding up very well to the wetness as well as the weight of the sandwich. What I thought was more of a white cream sauce is actually something more closer to a white barbecue sauce. There's a sweet tanginess there that I was not expecting. You certainly get a little bit of the sour punch coming from the pickles, but that spicy ride is there from beginning to end. The fried chicken cutlet here is actually quite good. The chicken meat is moist and the batter is well seasoned also. I don't I think I would call this the crispiest exterior. I'd actually describe it as more flaky than crispy. But altogether not bad. This is a pretty tasty hot chicken sandwich. Next up, we'll try the seasoned waffle fries. And it's looking good. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, that's pretty good. Looks certainly aren't deceiving here. There's a great seasoning blend on these fries. Not only do you get the basics like salt and pepper here, but there's also a little bit of a smokiness coming from what I believe is paprika. And it's the first flavors you get to experience when you bite into those fries. I actually really like how pronounced the potato flavor is here in these french fries. As you work your way through those spices, the eventual flavor profile changes into the natural flavor of the potato. And it is an enjoyable starchy flavor. A great crisp on the outside of these french fries. They did an excellent fry job, as the middle of these french fries are also really pillowy soft. I'm a fan, I like these french fries. All right everyone, now the last bite I'm trying here at the Canteen Food Hall is this chicken strip. Plenty of sauce choices, though I opted with sweet Thai chili today. It's typically my go-to flavor whenever I go to a chicken shop like this. Let's see how this tastes. You know what, yeah, that's pretty good. A really nice fry job on this chicken meat. You can see it's still juicy in the center and it is soft and tender on the bite. A decent crisp on that batter, although it's not giving that super crispy texture that I love. I'm mostly satisfied with the sweet chili sauce. It's garlicky, it has a nice sweetness to it, though not a ton of heat. Definitely wouldn't classify this as spicy at all. Most of the bite is actually coming from the green onion here. Maybe it's just me, but I do think they can amp up that spice level a little bit. I think my chief complaint with the sauce is actually that there's a little too much lime juice in it. The tart acidity really starts to take over in the middle of the bite and doesn't really relent until the very end. Overall, I wouldn't say it's bad, but I've certainly had better sweet Thai chili recipes in my day. And there you have it, my friends, the grand opening of the Canteen Food Hall here at the Rio Las Vegas. I'm absolutely stuffed to the brim. I think I'm going to be exploding here pretty soon, but I did enjoy my time. I was most excited to try Tony Luke's today, and it didn't disappoint. A nice French loaf with those evenly distributed onions and a well-seasoned low and slow ribeye actually makes that sandwich very tasty. The California Chicken Burrito from Southland Burrito Company was probably one of my favorites of the day as well. And in general, I wouldn't say anything here tasted truly bad. Although I am incredibly sad that the World Carnival Buffet is no more, but the Canteen Food Hall does have some pretty good offerings here. And if this is the direction that the Las Vegas resorts are moving to, then the Rio Resort certainly has a decent one going here. Now I hope you all enjoyed another Saturday video where we check out the touristy spots here in Las Vegas. I'll be returning on Tuesday where we check out another local eatery here in Las Vegas. I'm really excited to show you the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend and I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye.